You're listening to the Transform Your Nutrition Podcast with your hosts, Rebecca Heald and Jeff Ash. Our purpose is to help individuals and families transform their relationships with food and develop healthy bodies, minds, and attitudes, all without restriction, guilt, or shame. So, hi, Jeff. Hey, good Good so morning, here, afternoon, right? our usual, our usual greeting. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I thought I won't say morning or afternoon today, yeah. but you, you, you beat me to it. Yeah. So morning, Jeff, and good afternoon to me. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, so it's another episode of Transform Your Nutrition, the Transform Your Nutrition podcast. Really excited. I just want to say as well, actually, today, Jeff, that I've been, you know, I've been getting some really good feedback from people that have been listening to this um, podcast. So that's really, really great. If anybody else is listening and does listen regularly, then we would love your feedback. And we would also love to know if you've got any comments or suggestions for the further topics. Yes, so definitely. In that, that in there. Um, yeah, because obviously, you know, um, we're starting to grow a little bit more now, um, mm-hmm. get a little bit more established. So, yes. But today, I think our topic, we, we thought we'd talk about post-pandemic lunches because obviously, well, here in the UK, children are going back to school. My mm-hmm. children have gone back to school. Well, they were going a little bit um, beforehand, actually, but now they're all back with their friends. Routines being a little bit more established. And also, as well, many people are going back to the office. They're going back to work. Yeah. So um, what a wonderful topic to kind of touch upon this week I think about yeah lunch. yeah I think it's a good good time good time to be doing that you know here in Texas they're opening up everything basically they were going to 100% open on uh, businesses schools um, they actually dropped the mask mandate I think most of us are still wearing them for a while at least and uh, but yeah, so a lot of places are starting to open up more and and just last night our president here in the U.S has said that uh, it looks like they're projecting that that everybody's going to be vaccinated much sooner than they thought. So that awesome. you know, even even more places are going to be opening up. So yeah, yeah. Fingers crossed it all is, a, is on an uphill journey now. Yeah. Um this time very different picture to this time. Well mind you this time last year we it was again we had no idea um <laughs> how yeah. it was going to pan out did we it was all just the start. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, it was this time last year when we were all just kind of heading into lockdown and and homeschooling, and um, which does take me on quite nicely to I must admit that whilst I was homeschooling, I did not miss having <laughs> to make pack lunches. Um, yeah, I bet. So so yeah. So what are your? I guess for me, when it comes to pack lunches. It's not always, again, as we always say, you know, it's not always just about the what you're putting in the pat lunch. It's about Mm -hmm. how you're constructing that and and, and things like that, isn't it? And kind of what your intention is, I guess, when you're when you're putting lunches together. Would you agree, Jeff? Yeah, definitely. And I think I, I think our our you know we talk a lot about diet culture and diet mentality, and and I think one of the downsides with that 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 has um, instilled in a lot of people is this idea of well, it it has to be uh, relatively low calorie. So we're thinking of of when we're thinking about lunches and stuff, we're thinking about not packing it with too much energy density and and not too high in calories. And so meal prep often centers around that for a lot of people in trying to put together low-calorie lunches and low-calorie meals, or even in if you're planning and you're taking something that's pre-prepared, you know, a frozen dinner or something like that. Um, nothing wrong with that, but often we're looking at it from this energy density perspective, and there's so much more that we should be considering in that. Yeah, it's really interesting you should say that, actually, because that does just remind me of a conversation that I had um, with a new client recently. And we were talking, she was like, you know, I want, I want to be healthier and, you know, as as is often the case. Mm-hmm. But um, and I've spoken about this before, though, about how this notion of health is often very, you know, dressed up in diet culture. But mm-hmm. this um, this client going off on a little bit of a tangent but when I said to her, so what does health mean to you? What is healthy? What is a healthy meal? What is a healthy diet? And she, the first thing she said was low calorie. Yeah. You know, so so we tend to just equate health with low calories. But come on. I mean, people are completely, again, grossly misunderstood 
interpreting what what a calorie is right it's a energy it's what we need to to get by every day it's what you know it's it's how our bodies function so this idea that we should be existing on minimal calories it's just yeah it's just crazy when you really think about it yeah, it's definitely the wrong way to be approaching uh, approaching it. I think, and it's not that there's no that we don't give any consideration to the yeah. to the energy yeah. density of things because you know that that is something that from a nutrition perspective we do want to have our food high in nutrients and you know vitamins and minerals and and that that the good stuff that our body likes and that that fuels our body well and that makes us feel good and helps our body all the different systems in our body to function well, but at the same time, you can't, it's kind of, it's kind of like if you don't put gas in your car or petrol in your car, but you put in the best uh, quality oil, it, it's still not going to go over. You know, the, all the best quality oil and, and other fluids in that car are not going to make it go. It still needs that energy. And so we need to make sure that we're putting in energy into our bodies in the same way. It's, it's like having yeah. a car with everything else intact, but an empty gas tank. And it's not going to function very well that way. No, and I think I think another point to just to make there there as well, Jeff. And I think that's a really great um, analogy. But I think also just to point out, you know, we're not machines. Exactly, you know? we're not robots. And yeah, yeah, definitely, of course, our bodies. And I think the point that you're trying to make there, or you did make there, is that our bodies function best and run, you know, and and feel good when we are eating, you know, nutritious food that is, yeah, that supports you know, our energy levels, our feelings of well-being, et cetera. Um, but I think as well, it's, you know, that that idea that kind of calories in, calories out is is really kind of simplistic and it's not, is it? Right. Yeah. It, it, there, there are so many things to think about. And so yeah. one yeah. of those things yeah. is just your, your appetite. So how yeah. do you, how do you approach that? In terms of, um, like yeah, when you're I thinking think of packed lunches for, for either, either work or school. Yeah, 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 absolutely. So I think it's about having that balance of making sure that foods are filling, are you know, are filling, mm -hmm. but are also satisfying. Yeah. Okay. So it comes down to making sure that you are including, a, you know, a balance of foods that are going to meet your energy needs, that are going to help you feel full and feel mm -hmm. full for you know. A sustained period of time but are also going to be appetizing and satisfying so pleasurable mm -hmm. so in term you know I, I often think about it in terms of kind of you know you've got your rich food you've got your you know your energy dense foods so you've got those foods that are lower in volume but much more satisfying in taste which you should be thinking about and then you've obviously got your more filling foods that are going to be potentially lower in calories but are going to fill you up much more but I'm potentially not going to actually be as satisfying but when you've yeah. got a good balance and when I say satisfying they might not taste as good as the things mm -hmm. that are you know right. more rich okay so when I'm thinking when we're talking about kind of rich foods and stuff you know I'm talking about your, your cheeses your butters you know your, mm -hmm. all those kind of things they're things that taste good they make your te food taste good but they're low in volume and if you eat too much of those things you're not necessarily going to feel full and satisfied you're not necessarily going to fill your tummy up yeah right. Whereas if you're having a balance then with foods that are going to, you know, obviously fill you up and, and keep you going and make sure that you've got enough energy, then you're going to have a, a nice balance. Yeah. Yeah. I think that that's important. That I think balance is really kind of the key there and, and balancing yeah. the, the food it, volume. Yeah. Food volume. That's the mm -hmm. word. I would, yeah, exactly that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but having that balance between that as well as the energy density, because I, I was just having a conversation this past week with somebody about about that, and, and they were asking about swapping out some foods. And I said, well, that's that's OK, but what you're doing is you're cutting down on the amount of energy you're giving your body and you're filling it up with stuff that doesn't have any energy in it. And so while you may you may not feel hungry, you know, like when you eat it initially, it may fill you up and you may be saying, oh, wow, I'm not hungry anymore. And I didn't eat that many calories. Problem is, is that may not sustain you very long to the next meal. So then exactly. if it's, you know, work environment, uh, for example, if there's vending machines around, you may be more likely because you went with that low calorie salad and, and light vinaigrette dressing that, that only gave you let's, or you took a, um, 
like a frozen healthy choice is, is one of the brands here, frozen pre-prepared meal that has like chicken and pasta or something in their real low calorie, 250, 350 calories, something like that. And you're thinking, oh, I was good. I, I only had 350 calories for lunch and, and it filled me up. But the problem is, is that may not be enough energy to carry you over until yeah. dinner or until you get home. Same with a, with a kid at school, you know, whether the sandwich you packed for them um, or whatever you do there. And then now you're prone to say, oh, well, now I'm, I'm still hungry. I need a snack. And so now you go and you eat a, a 200 calorie candy bar and maybe a bag of chips. And now you've added in another three or 400 calories worth of food. And had you had you planned out your meal better, you may have been able to combine that all into into a more sustaining lunch. And you may have had more uh, nutrient dense stuff at that lunch meal. And it carry, and it may have carried you over better to the meal later anyway, and feeling better. So um, I think yeah. sometimes we just approach it in the wrong way. Yeah, well, I know because, you know, there is this, <clears throat> this is um, for uh, obviously a lot of the clients that I work with um, who will try, they, they've got this idea that they need to scrimp on mm -hmm. their lunches, scrimp on their, you know, so that they can save calories for later in the day. They think, oh, it's mm -hmm. okay. I'm, I'm running around. I'm busy. I don't really need to think too much. I'm just going to have something really light, like a salad and, and nothing else, you know. And uh, and when I say a salad, I mean like a few lettuce leaves and maybe a bit right. of cheese. You know, um, yeah. but, you know, actually salads can be really satisfying, can mm -hmm. be really, you know, and in fact, I'm, I'm you know, I'm going to talk more about this next week on my social media, you know, but I think, you know, we kind of think that we we can just get a, through the day with, on the bare minimum. Um, but like you said, you'll end up at some point making up for it. And I think, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, definitely. So what what things should people be considering then, would you say, Jeff? What what should they be paying attention to when they are constructing their lunches for for themselves and children as well? Yeah, I think that's a that's a great question. And that's something that is easy to overlook. And um you know, one of the things that that our diet culture and diet mentality is uh, that's really common is minimizing carbs. But um, so I think it's important that each that especially with kids and but even on, uh, adults is planning out your meals so that you have all three of the macronutrients, protein, fat and carbs in there, uh, because each one is going to have a little bit different effect on our appetite, our mood, our energy levels and all of those things. And so that's one of the big considerations in, in my view. Um, I've been, you know, I, I tell people all the time when they're coming up with snack ideas, they're like, yeah, I think an apple would be a great snack. And I'm like, hey, there's nothing wrong with an apple, but it's not going to carry you over very long. It may satisfy you for a half an hour. But if if that snack, if the purpose of it is to kind of re-energize in the middle of your day and carry you over to your next meal, it's probably not going to do that very well. So I, I really encourage people to think about all three of the macronutrients and because each one hits you different too. Carbs hit you a little quicker, especially uh, things with sugar and sugar is not a bad thing. Yeah. It's in fruit, it's in vegetables. It's, it, it knocks out our appetite very quickly. It just doesn't sustain us very well. So, you know, if you're thinking of putting in carbs, you put, put some carbs in there that helps satisfy you immediately your protein takes a little bit longer to kick in, and but it'll satisfy you longer. Fat, same way, it takes a little longer. Uh, fat can actually delay your gastric emptying, meaning it, your your food stays in your stomach longer. So, all of those different things. When you when you think about just just making a few tweaks to the the kinds of meals you're putting together, it's, whether it's a snack or a full blown you know lunch or dinner or whatever, you can really set yourself up for success and set yourself up to feel better, more energized throughout the day, not have those crashes and those kinds of things, um, and feel more satisfied while also not having packing your, your meals full of tons of, of, uh, calories. Yeah. And I think it's about, isn't it? It's about thinking, cause I, you know, not eliminating food groups, mm -hmm. you know, and yeah. cause exactly what you just said then there, you know, we, had, we, you know, the the three macronutrients so to speak are there for a reason yeah. okay you know they're there it's because it's what you know that they work perfectly well in synchronization you know like you just said then there you know sugar natural sugar or processed sugar obviously with natural mm -hmm. sugar 
you know, it tends to come from fruit and it tends to come from um, veggies and stuff like that. So you get in the starch, you get in the fiber as well. So that mm -hmm. does help you to sustain you, you know, a little bit longer, of course. And then like you say, then you've got your protein then you've got the fats that all literally help to, you know, give you that immediate hit that you need to suppress your appetite and then carry on taking you through. Yeah. So, you know, it's so important, you know, we just, why we think that we need to mess with, you know, what just makes sense and what is natural and is how our bodies function best. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now yep. I'm not saying every single meal is going to hit each, you know, but you, you definitely, if you're planning your lunches, you know, pack lunches, lunches for work, lunches for school, you are planning them. You're not mm -hmm. running into a pret a manger or a, you know, or yeah. a Starbucks just to get a quick hit and thinking, you know, oh God, that, you know, when you are, you know, there are going to be times when you're not necessarily able to do that. But when you're creating packed lunches, you are planning things, you're thinking about things. So it's a perfect opportunity for you to be creating a well-balanced meal for yourself and your children. And yeah. making sure that, like you said, it's about making sure it's not about, it, it, it's about having that balance, isn't it? Between having something that is going to be satisfying and, you know, really, really going to help to keep you fuller for longer. But also, also you need something that's also going to feel like, you know, be pleasurable, be satisfying. So a little bit of taste and a little bit of flavor mm -hmm. um, that you enjoy. Yeah, yeah, and those are- those A little are just... bit of taste and flavor, a lot yeah. of taste and flavor. <laughs> Why am I saying that? You yeah. know, but it's, yeah, do you understand? Yes, at least enough that it that it's somewhat enjoyable. It doesn't, I'm, uh, obviously not every meal is the one where we say, oh my gosh, this was so amazing. And that's yeah. not what we're saying. I mean, you don't have to, that's not what we're talking about, about enjoying it. But if you don't like a particular food, you really shouldn't be forcing yourself to eat it. And um, you should be finding something that, that you do enjoy. If you just don't like uh, broccoli, you don't have to eat broccoli. I mean, I, I don't like, I don't really like green beans. I've said that. And I, I had some at Thanksgiving. I never I, knew that, yeah. <laughs> yes, that's a common theme, but I'm probably not going to eat them very often because I just don't like them. But I do like broccoli. I like asparagus. I like um, other broccoli. kinds of salads and, and those kinds of things. And so it, it's okay to, to not eat certain kinds of, of foods, uh, if you don't enjoy them, but, but, um, yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, and I guess, um, coming back to kind of what are your favorite, if you were going to pack, you know, just practically, um, mm -hmm. what if you were going to make a lunch for work or um, we're going to the kids once, cause I'll talk about that. Cause obviously mm -hmm. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm doing that. And I've got a bit of an anecdote around that as well. Cause, um, but yeah, in terms of kind of if you were packing up a lunch or something, what, what would be your favorite? What would be your go to? Yeah, I mean, if if it's going to be I'm a big sandwich person. I I, I love sandwiches. And so um, because I, I love bread so much. So that's probably my personally my go to for for lunches is is sandwiches. They're easy. They um, I enjoy them. I could eat a sandwich every day for lunch and be perfectly fine with it. I don't really get tired of that. Um, but part of that is that you've got your meat. And so, um, you know, you, you got your meat, which is going to give you protein, the bread, it's going to give you carbs, and then you can put veggies on it too, um, or even pack some, some raw veggies. Cause I like raw veggies a lot, um, uh, probably more than cooked myself. And so, yeah. uh, aside with kids. just some, yeah, even raw potatoes, even raw pasta. I mean, they're not vegetables, but even <laughs> pasta, my kids are I'm like, oh, That's just funny. Pasta. they want pasta, pasta jar and they've got their hands in the and I'm like, oh. <laughs> There yeah, that's funny. But uh, but yeah, so those would be kind of my go to things. Um, but other things that that I've helped clients with before and come up with and some of the ideas is um, and I've done this myself, too, is chicken, rice and vegetables, those kinds of things like grilled chicken or even salmon. Uh, I've done those kinds of things before that that gives you again, the the rice gives you some of those. Uh, those carbs that'll kick in quickly. And they're also, rice is actually pretty sustaining or pasta. You might switch it out for whatever, whatever you prefer there. Um, some steamed vegetables, those things reheat pretty well in the microwave. And so it makes it convenient at work, uh, that kind of thing. Um, and then obviously your meat, you know, when you, when you do that too, you want to think about how the meat's prepared, make sure it's going to be something that when it reheats, that it's going to taste pretty decent. And so those kinds of those kinds of things work pretty well. What about would you say if you had a, a client that was vegetarian? Yeah, and that's a good question. I actually have one right now who who does not eat. Um, she, she's pescatarian, so she'll eat oh, okay. fish, yeah. but uh, but she won't eat Tuna's any other a great meat. One. Yeah, yeah, tuna. 
yeah. that's a convenient one. And it's cheap too. That's one of the other things too that we consider is is uh, cost can be a, an issue. And so it it those are certainly some considerations there. But um, the good thing too with with a lot of these meats and lunch meats, they'll they'll hold over for most of the day, you know, hold over yeah. from the morning when you pack it and take it out of the refrigerator and send it. And at lunch, the meat is still good, you know, because of the preservatives often that are put in there. So it's fine for, for sending in the kids lunch, even if they don't necessarily have a cooler or something with it. Um, but yeah, with, with vegetarians or, or, uh, pescatarians or vegans and that kind of thing, there's so many other things that you can yeah. include in there. Um, this one in particular, she likes, uh, tempeh, which is a, okay. a soy based one. And in fact, she got me trying it myself too. I made some teriyaki tempeh the other day and, um, yeah, it's actually, it's actually pretty good. Um, doesn't have much flavor. It'll, it'll absorb anything. So, uh, very high in protein. And, um, uh, and so anyway, yeah, you can, you can do those kinds of things, yeah. but yeah, beans as well. Beans. beans. Exactly. Yeah. I've got a lot of clients that will, um, yeah. And you know, even like things like, um, refried bre- beans and stuff like that. I've known clients to put those in wraps and into breads. Cause the other thing you said, mm-hmm. you mentioned about bread, um, you know, and I think I love wraps. I love pita breads as well. Yeah, me too. Yeah, 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 yeah. But it's about, yeah, it, I think it's about trying to just, you know, make sure that you are getting a balance, isn't it, of everything and mm-hmm. not, not being afraid to have some bread, not being afraid to have some rice, not being afraid to have some pasta, yeah. you know, making sure that it does, you know, it, you know, it's something that is going to sustain you beyond 2, 3 p.m. when you, you know, when you put the things again and. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I like um, again, the other, another thing. I don't know about. Sorry, you probably um, but another thing that I like to do is use leftovers. Yeah, yeah. Like yesterday, I posted this on my social media. Actually, I made like a frittata. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now you know, perfect for lunch today. Oh yeah. Perfect. Luca finishes school early on a Friday. He came home. We could just reheat the frittata. We could have it. Send it in lunch boxes, cold as well. My kids would love to have that cold. You know and. If we've had pasta the night before, my kids love to have cold pasta the yeah. next day at school. You know, same with rice. A lot of the time we have my, my youngest favorite meal at the minute is rice, uh, rice, bacon, and peas. Oh right? wow, okay. And I'm gonna I'm gonna be brutally honest here. I use packet rice sometimes. I, you know, if I'm rushing around <laughs> uh-huh. and you know, I will literally just fry up some bacon, I'll use some or what I tend to do is I put the rice into the pan rather than put it in the microwave. Mm-hmm. I'll put the packet rice into the pan, you know, because I don't always have 10, 15 minutes straight for it to cook with the peas, with the bacon. And it's literally a meal that he can have for dinner. And then there's leftovers for him to have in his pack up the next day. Yeah, that's great. He loves stuff like that. And with, mm-hmm. like you say, chicken, some cooked chicken and stuff like that as well. Because my kids get my kids get bored of sandwiches. They get bored, you mm-hmm. know, they, they really do. So they like to mix it up a bit. Yeah. And I, I know and that's the thing with, and, and you have to think about that thing. Uh, when, when you're thinking of these things, are you getting bored with the way you're eating and are yeah. your kids getting bored with the way they're eating? And some, some ways you can tell that is, are they, you know, were they taking their lunch and bringing home an empty lunchbox um, in most days? That. And then now suddenly they're bringing home a lunchbox with a half eaten sandwich or with a completely eaten sandwich. Uh, also, if your kids start telling you things, and this was an area where I made a mistake as a parent, um, my kids were telling me that, I mean, I didn't even have to guess. I mean, they were straight up telling me they were tired of eating the kind of food I was yeah. giving them. And, and I was just kind of like, yeah, it's not a big deal. And this was before I really started understanding a lot of this stuff. And, but they would be telling me they were getting tired of it, but yet I would still send it to them. And so they were just throwing it in the trash. Then they were coming home starving. And then of course that makes it difficult to then wait until, till dinner or to stick to that snack time. So they just were wanting to eat everything in sight. And, um, and, and so those are some things that I think <laughs> that's a big tip too, is listen to your kids and even ask questions. Um, yeah, but yeah, yeah. also yourself, ask yourself those questions. Hey, am I getting sick of this chicken? Cause I, I see a lot of, uh, of people in some of these fitness groups with their meal prep and it's, it's great. They, they, the meals look fantastic, but I, I know because I hear from them on a regular basis, but I know that they get tired of it because they're taking the same chicken mixed vegetables and rice meal every day to lunch and they'll pack it up. Then they've got, 
they've got their Tupperware with five different uh, days ready to go. And it's the same thing in every single one. And it's week to week. And then eventually they do get tired of it. And so that's something we need to be honest with ourselves about too, is say, hey, am I getting sick of this? Because I don't have to eat this way. There's many ways that you can um, prepare uh, something for yourself to eat each well, day. And, uh, yeah. yeah, definitely. No, you're right. Because we can get, I get this a lot, even with clients, even with clients that aren't, you know, that will, they get stuck in a rut because, and mm -hmm. I think a lot of this for, for adults anyway, comes from, um, you know, not being, not, not knowing what to eat sometimes, feeling afraid to eat yeah. things that maybe haven't been okayed before on a diet. Yeah. You know, so I always say like, look at just look at just little tweaks you can make, little things that you can add. Like with my kids, I would just subtly change things in their lunch boxes and add add little things, or you know, some or I'll change from a wrap to a pita bread, or I'll try yeah. them out with a with a bagel, or change the fillings. I try and rather than change the whole thing, I try and just add something in a little bit different so that it's still familiar. You know, yeah. and this is important for our children, as we know, that it's important that we make sure that when we're when we're offering new foods to our children, that we're making sure it's within the context of food that they're familiar with so that they mm -hmm. can trust that they're going to have enough to then um, fulfill their needs. And it's the same as us with adults. If we are, you know, trying to kind of rebuild our relationship with food and re trust our bodies etc then I, I would always say just try and introduce this is kind of how I kind of got over my issues was just to slowly start to introduce things that I had forbidden before you know one step at yeah. a time is what I'm talking about in my group program it's funny as well we were talking in the group program she was like you know talking about snacks and it was like you know what should I be doing because there's a big gap between my lunch and my dinner she's a teacher mm -hmm. she said I'm having my lunch at lunchtime with the kids and then there's a big big gap to my dinner and I'm starving and all I'm taking is fruit and I'm like well no wonder you're starving fruit is yeah. like yeah fruit's not enough for a snack is it no same concept you still need to be thinking on a mini you know it's a mini meal you still right. need to be thinking about your snacks in terms of a protein a fat and a carbohydrate whenever you can I always say to clients, sorry, I've gone off on one a little bit here, but I always say to clients, try protein and produce. So mm -hmm. if you're having something like, a, you know, if you're having an apple, add something to it, like add some cheese or some nut butter. And then you're getting some, you know, you're getting a good balance there, aren't you? Of you're getting some healthy fats, you're getting some carbohydrates and you're getting a bit of protein. If you need a bit slightly larger snack, you know, think about your snacks as mini meals that are focused around the same principles because it works why do we think it doesn't you know and think about how an apple on its own has such a different impact on your satiety and yeah. your appetite than an apple apple alongside something else but i always say to clients play with this see how it feels notice the difference yeah no that's such a good point and and, and i think it did coming back to that that calorie fixation that that we have a lot of times we think, okay, I'm going to have a snack. It needs to be as low calorie as possible. So I'm going to have a 90 calorie yogurt or a hundred calorie snack pack thing, or, um, or just an apple. And so we're thinking in terms of what, what's the minimal amount of calories I can put in my body for this snack that'll sort of knock my hunger out just enough that I can tolerate it till my next meal. And we should really be rethinking that because that might work for a week or two or three or six weeks, but at some point your body is going to fight you back and you're going to be much more successful long-term if you're thinking more in terms of what can I do to sustain myself in between these feeding times and not getting stuck on the calorie number there. And, and what you were saying with the cheese and, and the different types of things to go along with the fruit is, is a great way to think about that uh, because it is going to help you long-term. You know, you might you might for a short period of time minimize your calorie intake, but that's not what, that's not going to be a long-term solution. No, it's really not, is it? Because your mm -hmm. body will fight back if you're not having enough. Yeah. You know, your body likes, you know, it likes balance. It likes to be fed, you know, in a way that is going to, you know, it, it's about trust. If you're not giving your body everything that it needs, you're not, you're, you're, you're disconnecting from it. Mm -hmm. You're not trusting it anymore. And yeah, and it's just, and I think um, the other thing as well is to not think that you need to be not including um, the things that you enjoy. So, so I'm talking about like at lunchtime, you know, 
um, for adults and children. I don't know about you, but you know, I'll have a, I'll have my sandwich or I'll have my um, my wrap or my frittata or whatever. Mm-hmm. But then, you know, I don't just have that. I will always probably have some fruit, and I tend to have a bit of chocolate as well. And you know, because that's yeah. that's what I enjoy. And you know, I remember a time when I would only ever eat chocolate a certain time in the day, and it was only so much. So chocolate was like, yeah, yeah. Whereas now it's like you don't know, you know, a part of a part of a meal is to have that. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and it's the same with children when we're making their pack ups as well. I get parents that go, oh, I'm not allowed to put crisps in there or I shouldn't put some chocolate in there. Yeah, of course you should. Yes, you should. Because otherwise you're just saying that. Yes. Now, don't get me wrong. You know that there are foods that are going to be more nutritionally dense, that are mm-hmm. going to be more nutritionally valuable, but they shouldn't be put on a pedestal over other foods that are not for our children should they yeah. and you know in order to you know you know show our children what a healthy balanced diet looks like we need to make sure that we're offering all of those foods don't we yeah absolutely and i think that's a good a good point there with the with the pack ups is putting putting in those those kinds of foods for for the kids but also for ourselves there's um you know yeah. we can we can put those in there and and we can trust our kids that they'll eat their their other food too um, you know, I think some parents worry that if I put, uh, if I put cookies in their lunch, they'll eat their cookies and then they won't eat the, the rest of their lunch. But if now, if, if we're coming at it from a place where we have been applying pressure to how much we allow them to eat at meals, or we're forcing them to eat a certain amount or certain bites. And so we, we have this framework and this structure in place that, that revolves a lot around pressure, then, then yeah, it may be that when they, when they get to school that, that they may not eat the, the other stuff that we put in there. But if we institute this thing that we've talked about before, this division of responsibility with our kids and stick to our job as far as provide, deciding what's going to be available and let them decide what to eat, we start instituting that. They will get to a place where when they're at lunch at school, they might eat their cookies first, but they are going to know that they need to eat their sandwich as well yeah. um, in order to sustain them and that they know that, it, that they're going to feel better when it's when it's done that way. And so um, so we can, we need to be able to tr- we should trust our kids that they will eat that if we even if we include those fun, those fun and play foods in their in their lunches, too. And so, um, yeah, that that fear, I think, is often misguided. Well, I think sometimes it's our fear, it's that our own fears portrayed being portrayed. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, and I think and I and I spoke to I've been I was speaking about this only yesterday. I've been speaking to to somebody who wants some support um with, with her with her child and her and her children's a child's feeding. And she, you know, it was about, you know, she was like, be honest with me, you know, and I was like, I'm I'm gonna be honest with you that if you wanna work with me and I, I will, you know, we can do some work together. I said, but you know, it's going to be, and I can help you establish a routine and a structure for your child, absolutely. But it might mean that you've got to question some of the beliefs and some of the ways that you're approaching things right now. Mm-hmm. Um, because that's that's where you know we're portraying our own fears and our own concerns onto our children and it's you know we need to be modeling and this is the other thing you know pack ups creating pack ups and I, I wrote about this actually you know it provides a perfect opportunity again for you to model what you know what yeah. what a healthy balanced meal does look like and and it's okay you know the other thing is is, is don't put pressure on your children I mean I've been there done that got the mm-hmm. t-shirt but putting pressure <laughs> on your children like Coming back to it, but you know about you can't eat. D- make sure you eat your sandwiches first. You can't eat your crisps or your cookie until afterwards. Right. You know, don't. Kids will. I am seeing it play out. I am seeing it play out. You know, it's it's wonderful. I'm so pleased that you know I've come across this division of responsibility, and I'm understanding this as a young mother. You know, well, not that young. My kids are young. I'm not that young, but you know, <laughs> I'm I'm so pleased because I'm seeing how it works. I'm seeing my children literally make choices that are satisfying and also, you know, are going to fuel their bodies. They, they, they you know, sometimes they'll ask me for carrots. Sometimes they'll ask me for biscuits. If we're putting together a meal, you know, they, they'll they say to me, oh, um, that when they're constructing their snacks, the other day Leo was constructing a snack and he was like, right, mummy, what was it? He said he wanted three things in this snack. I mean, obviously, you know, I, I provide the structure. I do provide mm-hmm. the structure, but sometimes I do talk to my kids about it. Yeah, because yeah. my kids are quite advanced now with this whole division. Mm-hmm. And even when it comes to creating a, a pack, anyway, I'm going off on one. But um, 
I was like, he was like, I want three things for it. And I was like, right, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to make this. And then he was like, but mum, mummy, we need to make sure that I have an apple and I have this. And I, I can't remember exactly what it was, but I was just like, wow, he's just constructed the perfectly balanced snack. And he's seven, mm-hmm. you know? And yeah. I was like, yeah. Yeah. So have faith and trust, you know, that, cause I don't do de- my kids have got a structure. They're not allowed to eat crisps and chocolate all day. Mm-hmm. But they also know, like, like yesterday we came in and I was doing, and Leo was like wanting something to eat and it was not far off dinner. And I always have that kind of like, because you do have to, you do have to be flexible within things as well, mm-hmm. don't you? I yeah. knew we'd come on period because um, the way that work had worked out or whatever. And I knew it was something, I was like, no, I'm going to make that decision that he's going to wait until dinner. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Sometimes there are occasions when I say, do you know what? You can have your, you can have your fruit that you're going to have after dinner before dinner because you've gone a long time. Yeah. Other times, like yesterday, I knew he needed to wait. So, so my point here is that they, my kids do have structure. They do. They, it's not like it's a free fall at all. <laughs> yeah. That's no good either. Um, as we've spoken about before. But anyway, sorry. You know, I just, when we model, when we model what we want our children to grow up and the, the relationship that we want them to have, with, that, that they, that, that's how they learn. That's how they pick things up, isn't it? Yeah, I think that's a great point with um, kind of coming back to those those um, packed lunches for our kids and for ourselves. You know, we... When it when it comes to the the lunches we put together for our kids, I think definitely that think about it from that modeling perspective. It's such a great way of of teaching them about how to put together meals because that's something that when they are adults they're going to need to be able to yeah. to do. They they will need the, that that skill set, and the best way to do it is by modeling it rather than teaching it. Rather than saying you need to include a protein, a fat, a carbohydrate. If you're modeling it, they will just naturally know what foods go well together. And and then, you know, down the line, you can certainly do more of the education part with them as it comes up if they're interested in it. But early on, it, you know, like you said with Leo, he's already picked that up just by uh, modeling it. And, um, and oh, he also. More, more, I just want to say there as well before I forget, sorry, mm-hmm. but more so with Leo. You know, obviously, you've just said then there about obviously how Leo's picking it up. But I would say that it's I'm seeing it more so with Leo um, because, yeah, I definitely think he's more explorative. He's more, you know, he's 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 and I think it's because I started younger with him. Does that make Mm -hmm. sense? Yeah. Luca, Luca is still very much, you know, he has to have his. He has to eat his meal and then have his his after his dessert or whatever. He's oh, okay, probably, yeah. He's probably a lot, and uh, you know, I, I, but that's how it was. You know, I didn't know any better at the time. It was mm-hmm. only really when Leo was born that I start. Well, no, when Leo, you know, it's only been the last few years that I've really kind of understood and probably healed my relationship too. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm really seeing seeing it happen. I mean, Luca's, you know, Luca's not. There's no issues particularly with Luca, but I'm just noticing. I think that because Luca, I would say Luca is still a very intuitive eater, definitely. Mm-hmm. You know, because there's no pressure; he doesn't get pressure from me. Um, but I think Leo just seems to kind of be able to construct things a little bit better. Does that make sense? Because I started earlier, I think. Yeah, it does. I, and the earlier that we start with them, the easier it is. Uh, just like you know, all of these different things that we talked about in other episodes, it's much easier if you start it early on, but it doesn't mean that if you wait until later to start it, that they can't make those, those changes and that shift in mindset. It just sometimes takes a little bit more, more work. And there may be certain habits that are, that are ingrained in there a little bit that, that still may carry over. You know, Luca may always eat his dessert after meal. That may just be something that he does going forward. And you know what, there's nothing wrong with that, but knowing knowing that he can eat it before if he wants to and that he's just choosing to have it afterward, then, then that's great. You know, when we start having these rules where we say, oh, I can't have it afterward or if I don't eat X amount of my dinner, then I can't eat a dessert. When we have those kinds of rules, those are the kinds of things that tend to to distort um, our relationship with food. And, and thinking, you know, again, another point that I think we should make with, with packed lunches is that... Um, we want to make sure that we're avoiding putting pressure on our kids ahead of time. You know, we're not going to be there with them while they're eating it at school. So we certainly don't want to be saying, and it's well, it's a very well-meaning. We we don't want to remind them. We sometimes say, oh, I'm just reminding them. Um, but it's still a form of pressure to say, is, make yeah. sure you eat your make sure you eat your sandwich before you eat your cookies, and uh, or make sure you eat at least half your sandwich or make sure you eat at least five bites of your sandwich. And, you know, we think that we're being more flexible by saying, okay, well, I'm not going to, 
I'm not going to force him to eat the whole thing. I'm going to I'm going to say, why don't you eat three bites of your sandwich today? Can you do that for me? And we think that we're we're taking the pressure off, and really, we're it's the same thing. And uh, right. and so those are some things to think about too, as our as the kids are going back to school. Is this might be a good time to to do that simple thing where we no longer say um, anything with regard to how much they're eating, but rather we ask them, hey, how was your lunch today? Um, oh, how do you feel? How was your hunger level? Yeah. Um, and if they, and the other thing I will say is that, you know, if they come home and like you said, before, if, if something hasn't been eaten or they've left yeah. something in there, you know, get curious about it. Like, oh, why didn't you eat your lunch today? And oh, I'm not going to, just get curious, you know, and it might not be that they didn't like something. It might not be that, you know, it could, there could be lots of different reasons. Mm-hmm. Like I said, they could be getting bored with something. They could not have much of an appetite, you know. So I think it's, um, the other thing to bear in mind as well is that, you know, and I don't know how you deal with this one, or I'm not, I'm not quite sure myself, and maybe you can um, offer me some advice on this one, um, Jeff, but there's the, there's the pressure, there's the peer pressure. So Luca mm-hmm. loves hummus. Um, so in his pack up, I'll send him sometimes some hummus and some carrot sticks or some um, crackers. And he came home one day and he said, stop sending me weird stuff in my pack up, mum, because the other kids are saying stuff about it. And that that was kind of a bit like, oh, do you know what? You know, he's so good. He's, he eats such a range of foods, and he, you know, mm-hmm. and and that the, yet yeah, there's this pressure from. Um, I mean, I, I I don't know how you would deal with that, um, Jeff. I don't know what yeah. you reckon. I mean, have you got any? I mean, I can tell you what how I did, but I mean, have you got any suggestions on that? Yeah, I mean, I think that's a good time to to start unpacking the whole peer pressure thing because uh, you know one of the things I point out all the time with food is that so much of it is has nothing to do with the food. Yeah. It has to do with I'm different. I'm weird. My friends are pointing out the weird things about me, and and I don't like that. And so it, this just happens to be a food case. But at the same time, if 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 he continues to to allow his friends to pressure him with not bringing hummus, it's he's going to be much more prone to when they pressure him to try uh, illegal drugs or alcohol or any of those kinds of things, or pressure him to do something that he doesn't want to do or pressure him to do to to stop doing something that he enjoys like let's say let's say he loves playing golf and his friends make fun of him so he quits playing golf it's like that those are the kinds of things that the food thing may seem like oh well I'll just send him I'll just send him stuff that's not weird that may actually exacerbate the problem yes. because we're not dealing with the root and just like what we talk about with our clients um when they have food issues, we deal with the root problem, not just saying, here, let's put you on a lower calorie plan. It's like, that's, that's not the problem. There's, there's some other problem there. And the same with a kid, a kid whose weight has spiked up during the pandemic. The problem is not, oh, they need to eat less. The problem is let's figure out what, what caused that spike and let's deal with that. And probably what will happen is that when we deal with that root cause, things will level back out again. Yeah. And so that's that's how I would approach that with them. But at the same time, I mean, we can honor our kids wishes to an extent there and say, you know, I I, I do decide what I'm going to send you. But at the same time, I don't want you to feel bad about your meal. So I'll I'll, I'll keep that in mind. If you don't want to take hummus, you know, let's come up with something else. But at the same time, um, you know, we, we really want to encourage them to stand up for themselves and say, you know, I bring this because I like it yeah and, well that's kind of the conversation that we had mm-hmm. about it and I was like do you like it darling well yeah and I said do you does everybody eat things that you you know are they all eating everything that you like in their pack ups and stuff you know and that that was the conversation that we had and it was about you know like Leo probably wouldn't have given it he wouldn't have cared whereas yeah. Luca was a little bit more conscious mm-hmm. and a little bit more susceptible to these things you know it does come down to the individual doesn't it I think but yeah. I think yeah I think you're damn right you know if we we need to kind of encourage our children to be more safe and, and trusting of their own choices. Yeah. Um, and I think this, again, does come down to trusting themselves, doesn't it? And, I, mm-hmm. you know, it, it, when you think about it, it's so, it's so complex because, you know, when we, if we're bringing up children to have confidence and trust in their own body, in, in how it feels and stuff like that, it, it transpires to other areas of life as well. Yeah. You have trust and you have confidence. I know this from myself. Once I started to have trust and confidence in myself to, 
to eat well, it's, you know, it spirals and I've got confidence in other areas of my life as well, because I'm, you know, I'm trusting my, and this is what I see with clients all of the time when they begin to, because, you know, being on and off diets, not trusting the, 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 the food choices that they make has such an impact on their self-esteem because they constantly feel like they're failing. They constantly feel like they're being judged. When they can begin to overcome that, you know, I've had clients that have gone on and actually, you know, they've got new jobs, they've, you know, they've, they've, they've changed the way that they approach life. I've got one client today who told me that she's coming off her, her medication for, you know, for depression. So, you know, it's just so it, when you're, and it's because we are, it's, it's about connecting back with your body and trusting your body and having faith and confidence. And if we can encourage children to do that, for, you know, with their food and with their relationship with food, then it, it does absolutely knock into other areas of their life. But what you said there, I think is so important because even when you do have trust in your body, et cetera, you are all, and I had, again, I had this conversation with one of my clients today and I said, do you not think I'm constantly having to deal with the, the social media messages? I yeah. said, I'm somebody who's in, you know, I, I get, I, again, you know, and I'm going to be quite open about this. There's pressure on me. The amount of people that will say to me, well, you're a nutritionist. You've always got to look the part, you know? Yeah. And I'm like, Hey, you know, how dare you, you know? Oh, I, you know, I'm good at my job. I know what I'm doing. I can help people. It doesn't matter what I look like. It doesn't matter yeah. how I live my life, you know? And it's like, it's, but, but you, you, and I think, again, it comes back all the way back down to this thing with Luca, isn't it? You know, yeah. even though he is quite a competent eater, eater, and, you know, I think that he, you know, he knows when to stop. He doesn't, he, he does, but he's still facing society. He's still facing mm -hmm. that pressure. Yeah. And like you said, if we can talk these things through with children and help them to build the resilience when they're facing these pressures out in the big wide world, then we're going to be setting them up for more success, aren't we? Yeah. And, you know, eating competence is it, it, the research actually supports this, that when people are more eating competent, they are more confident yes. in other areas of life. And so really setting them up in this way is going to help them carry over into so many other areas. And if you have a kid with special needs, it's probably even more important. So a kid who maybe is in a larger body or who has some other kind of a special need, maybe they're on the uh, on the autism spectrum, maybe they have uh, ADHD or something like that or, or some other kind of, uh, of of issue that makes their life even more difficult. It's so much more important to to um, to to develop this eating competence in yeah. them because it, it will carry time. over. Yeah. And even with adults that have, mm -hmm. um, you know, autism, ADHD, mm -hmm. um, and how kind of, you know, it, it's so easy as well for them to get fixated on, on external rules, on diet rules, on, on mm -hmm. following, you know, so when they, yeah, it, it has such an impact when they begin to then become more confident and have that competency within themselves. Yeah. Well, I think that's probably a great way to wrap up our, our episode for today. I think we've had a good good discussion on some ideas for packed lunches and general principles. And uh, hopefully people noticed we didn't say pack in more vegetables, pack in this. It's like, no, that's not that approach include it from them. how. Yeah. Include them. Oh, absolutely. Definitely include them. In include the, yeah, but yeah, exactly. <laughs> but yeah, think about how they're sustaining you, how they're making you feel and how they're carrying you over through the day. And that's really where we should focus our attention. You know, later on, once we have that down, we can make those little fine tuned tweaks and say, you know what, I'm really wanting to try and increase the vitamin density of my meals. But once we can do that later on down the road, but often we jump to that first instead of saying, all right, let's get to the let's stick to the basics of make sure I'm feeding myself enough energy that it's sustaining me, carrying me over and um, and that I'm developing that confidence. And okay. and the same for our kids, too. I just want to say as well, Jess, that um, I, I I did do a blog last week. Mm -hmm. um, well, I've shared it with you, so I, you, we can put it in the comments. Yeah. It just does talk through um, post-pandemic lunches and, you know, and, and mm -hmm. how we can um, model it with children, get them involved and provide the structure and the scaffolding that they need to construct snacks. Like my, my Leo yeah. listens to me, like, yeah, 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 I'm so proud. I mean, yeah, it's not perfect. You know, sometimes, you know, the kids do just want chocolate, but yeah, they can do it. They can do it. Yeah. Which is interesting. So. Yeah, well, that's great. All right. Well, thank you all for listening. And we look forward to having another episode for you out uh, next week. Bye.